From San Diego, California, this is a One Extraordinary Marriage Show. Where being busy is overdone, romancing is fun, and scheduling sex has taken the guesswork out of wondering when you're going to get some. I'm Tony DeLorenzo, your co-host, along with my beautiful wife, Elisa. From coast to coast and around the world, thank you for joining us. It's time to talk sex, love, and commitment. Give us a call or text us on the Hug Hotline at 858-876-5663 or send us an email to hugs at oneextraordinarymarriage.com. In today's show, we're talking about mutual masturbation and its role in your marriage. And as we start the show, listen to these words from Jean Phillips. She says, sometimes the most important conversations are the most difficult to engage in. Mm-hmm. And that's, yes. this is one of those topics, difficult to engage in, but it's going to be very important for your marriage. But before we go there, we start each show with a hug. And hugs an opportunity for you to hear from someone else in the one family whose marriage has experienced breakthrough. And this week's hug is sponsored by OpenFit. And we're going to share a little bit more about how this company is changing exercise later on in the show. But the hug came in from an email that we had received that starts with, I love your show, and I've been listening for eight months now. Your podcast about fear crippling marriages really hit home for me. And if fear is an issue in your marriage, you can check it out at oneextraordinarymarriage.com slash 453. Goes on to say, for the past year and a half, I've struggled with the fear of dying young. Mm. And now that my mother-in-law has passed away from cancer over a month ago, my anxiety is sometimes worse. I always think about and wonder if my husband would just move on and be happy with someone else and who would raise the girls being that our youngest has Down syndrome and medical issues. Mm. It also affects my sex drive and time that I spend with my husband. It is my prayer and heart's desire to grow old with my husband of 11 years this month and experience having grandchildren. Your podcast helped me so much today that I'm going to listen to it again. Mm. It made me feel better that I'm not the only one who deals with the inside fears and voices of untruths. Thank you so much for your transparency. I really needed this today. Wow. Love it. And gosh, you know, this one hits home for Elise and I. Mm -hmm. And obviously in that episode, we share that. So... Um, if that's something you're facing right now in your marriage, in your life, go listen because we want to see you have breakthrough. We want you to have hope. We want you to have the extraordinary marriage that you desire. Well, and that's why we get behind these microphones every week, right? We're going to bring up those topics. We're going to talk about those those areas that couples are dealing with. Or maybe, it, like she said, it's those inside thoughts and they need a voice Mm -hmm. and it's why we get behind the microphones it's why we have these conversations with each one of you and before we start the show obviously you heard tony say at the beginning of the show that we're talking about mutual masturbation and its role in your marriage and know that there are a lot of different areas that we could be discussing around the role of masturbation in your marriage. Mm -hmm. And you know, you've all sent in so many questions about like, well, talk about this, talk about this. We're not going to be able to get to all of it in one show. So I'm just, I'm putting that caveat at the beginning, Mm -hmm. but we are going to be focusing on this show about mutual masturbation in your marriage. And you know, masturbation is one of those words that is loaded with a lot of emotions. I mean, some some of you may have actually even already considered turning off this show. Because we said that word, because it's a word that's been associated with pornography. It's, it's a word that's been considered a sin in the church world. It, people think it's deviant behavior. People get angry at the mere mention of this word and wonder why or if it even has a place within marriage. And, and I'm going to encourage you to listen to the show with an open mind, right? Just listen. As with everything that we talk about here at One Extraordinary Marriage, it's all about looking at what does this look like in the context of your relationship, Mm -hmm. right? We don't ever get behind these microphones and say, you must do this. It's never happened. It won't happen. You two are unique. And this is a conversation that's going to be unique to the two of you. And it's going to give you an opportunity to create a depth of emotional intimacy around this topic and around this word. Mm Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, it's so funny. I was talking to some coaching clients the other day and we were talking about definitions because one of them said something to me. I'm like, well, how would you define that? And they just chuckled and they're like, yeah, we've heard you say that once or twice on the show because it's important that we talk with a common definition. Yes. And this is a word I'm telling you, if you ask 10 people, like they all get squirmy on you and the definitions would come in different ways. So I always go to the dictionary when I'm getting ready to talk to you guys. And the generally accepted definition is to stimulate one's own genitals for pleasure. But there was a secondary definition that I thought was really interesting and that I'd never, never seen 
before, never even considered. But there's a definition that says to stimulate the genitals of someone to give sexual pleasure. And I think that's really important. And even as Tony and I were talking about this show, that that definition even exists. Right. Because, you know, we're talking about marriage. We're talking about sex. We're talking about touching each other's bodies. And as Tony and I were talking about this, he's like, well, so it kind of sounds like foreplay. Yeah. That was my first thing as Elisa and I were going over this and, and over this episode and, and discussing as soon as you said that definition to stimulate the genitals of someone to give sexual pleasure, I, my, my first thought was foreplay. And had we said that this show was going to be about mutual foreplay, you'd be fine. You'd walk on no big deal. And yet adding that word mutual masturbation can cause a riff. Mm -hmm. It can cause a little ruffle in your feathers. Absolutely. And, you know, we appreciate the transparency of the one family, because just like that hug that I read said, you know, we love your transparency and it's made such a difference in, in our life. The transparency that you all bring, like when we ask you questions on IG stories is not lost on us. It is incredibly significant. And 52% of you said that you do masturbate without your spouse. So that's the first definition, right? Mm -hmm. To stimulate one's own genitals. 47% of you are concerned if your spouse masturbates without you. So there's stuff going on. It's happening, right? Don't think it's not happening. 42% of you said that you masturbate together as part of your sexual intimacy. Mm. So, so we need to be talking about this because masturbation is happening within the one family. And by bringing this out into a conversation, we can, we can address the confusion. We can address the shame, the guilt, the conflicting teaching and all of those things. And, and here's, here's the truth guys. Tony and I do engage in mutual masturbation within our sexual intimacy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put it right out there. Now it hasn't always been mutual. There were definitely seasons early in our relationship, in our marriage, where it was very one-sided or I shouldn't say one-sided, individualized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, individualized because we both, we both uh, were in that act at different times in our marriage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was, it was definitely, gosh, how do I put it? It was something between the two of us that wasn't actually building the two of us. Correct. Well, it wasn't building the foundation of our marriage. It was actually causing a wedge and a separation in our sexual intimacy and even our, I would say, even our emotional intimacy because the individualized act of masturbation was taking away the, the pleasure that we have so come to enjoy and understand now in a healthy marriage. Well, and that's, the, you bring up a good point there and I have to address this even though we're talking about mutual masturbation. When you're masturbating by yourself for your own pleasure without your spouse or even their knowledge or even their not. I mean, obviously we know that's happening, right? The statistics mm -hmm. are, are, the numbers are there. You are removing an element of intimacy from your marriage and from your spouse. I always look at it like this. You're taking your sexual intimacy into your own hands. Hashtag truth. Right. And I mean, at the end of the day, that's it. You, you're taking you're taking, and I and Elisa both have been there, we were taking our sexual intimacy into our own hands. Mm -hmm. We didn't believe that our spouse could pleasure us in mutual masturbation. Mm -hmm. We didn't believe that our spouse could help us get to that place of orgasm. Mm -hmm. Maybe we were too afraid or maybe ashamed to, to share with our spouse what feels good or what doesn't. So instead of telling them and, and engaging in that emotional intimacy, because that can be almost the toughest part. And, and I would say for me in years past, before we got to this place of being open, honest and transparent, it was scary. It was scary. Like my heart would be pumping. Like I felt like my heart was going to come out of my chest. My hands were sweaty to speak about something that is something that happens between a husband and a wife. Mm -hmm. And yet it was easier for me to just go masturbate on my own to pornography, which I have not looked at pornography now for over 16 years. So I know that there can be breakthrough and, and freedom from that. Mm -hmm. And so I, I see it like that. It's taken into our own hands instead of 
getting into that emotional connection, that, that conversation tough, like Elisa said at the beginning, you know, with the, with the quote, sometimes the most important conversations are the most difficult to engage in. Mm -hmm. I can totally relate to that. Tony's got a little sweat on his brow right now. Like oh, even yeah. just even just those memories because it was so strong. Mm -hmm. Because it's true. When when it's for your own pleasure, there are often the you know, it is often associated with pornography or erotica. And I just want to say something that I think needs to be said right here in this moment. This is not something that just husbands do, that just men do. Women, wives are also engaging in masturbation and pornography and erotica independently of their spouses. So this is not, this is not a like bash on the guy's time. Mm -mm. This isn't a bash on anyone. This is just bringing it to light and saying, we can't just be looking at men and saying, this is your problem when we're talking about this, like individual masturbation. Correct. And the, the challenge with that is that when you are stimulating yourself, when you're do, having engaging in individual masturbation, you can actually create a habit that is hard to break and will diminish your sexual intimacy. Because let's face it, your spouse doesn't feel like your hand or like your vibrator. They don't pulse at the same. They don't have the same intensity. That doesn't happen. It just doesn't. I I've been there. I can tell you that Tony does not operate like my vibrator, which I don't even know where that is anymore. But like back in the day when I was using a vibrator, it, it became a dependency because mm -hmm. it worked and it worked quickly and I could just be like, okay, I'm done. But we want to bring, we want to just address that because anytime you talk about masturbation, you have to talk about the individual. Correct. But we also have to look at this word and say, why are we giving this word so much power that we can't even discuss it within marriage? Right. If it's to stimulate, if we can accept, and maybe that's the challenge, maybe we can't accept the fact that there's a definition that says to stimulate someone's genitals for pleasure. And when we say someone's, I mean, we obviously in that definition, it's going to be that someone is either your husband or your wife. Correct. Yeah. Within the marriage covenant. Right. Or in, in, and I would even say even in our sexual intimacy, there is individual within our bed, but we know we're doing that together. It is part of the sexual intimacy. Correct. It, and and like I wrap my, I, I struggle to wrap my head around why we give words so much power when we aren't even able to discuss them. Mm -hmm. Right. Why do we say, oh, that's dirty or that has no place when we don't even know truly what the definition is and how that could actually deeply enhance our, our sexual intimacy. Right. What happens if I learn not only how to touch Tony to please him, but taking that one step further, create a depth of pleasure within our sexual intimacy in our marriage bed. Mm -hmm. What changes there? What what changes if I say, hey, Tony, touch me like this? Because when he does that, I'm like, hey, that works. You, or you say to your husband, hey, touch me like this. Or you say to your wife, you know what? I like it when you do this. And you show them how to touch you. And, and can I just say, if your spouse shows you what works for them, Please don't dismiss it. Please don't ignore it. And please don't say something um, in the moment like, I will never, ever do that. Y you want to talk about like killing your sexual intimacy? Do any one of those Rejecting three things. Rejecting your spouse? Our marriage beds are supposed to be a place of pleasure and a place where we do touch one another. Seriously, touch one another. Explore what works. Find pleasure. Give pleasure. And I will say, over the 22 years of our marriage, there has never been a better learning place than in the marriage bed when there is masturbation happening. Because you can visualize, visually see what's working and what doesn't work. It helps. It has helped Elisa and I tremendously to see what is working. I, I will tell you, it, it, it opened up it opened up my eyes many, many years ago when we first started looking at this and going into this area, which at the time, I don't even know if we would have called it mutual masturbation. I don't know what we would have even said at that point in time. All I knew is that we were on an exploration of each other's bodies. Mm -hmm. And I just remember, and this is many years ago, I just remember Elisa pleasing herself in front of me in our bed and I could see where she, her hand was. I could see where her fingers were. 
And that helped me tremendously to give her joy and pleasure, which took away that vibrator, Mm -hmm. which was a crutch for us for so long. We, I mean, in all honesty, that vibrator would just come out like that until we just said, you know what? We're going to do this. And, And vice versa. She was able to see me and see what I was doing so that she could then perform that for on me. And can we just all accept the fact that, that our bodies were designed with erogenous zones, like places where that were with nerves that were meant to be stimulated. That's right. You have them. Your spouse has them. Guess what? That means that you were supposed to be touched, right? Like, like your body was designed for touch. And yet, so often we're in this place with sexual intimacy and we know this because we get the emails and, and we get the, the direct messages and, and the Facebook messages and all of these kinds of things that say my husband or my wife won't touch me. I mean, it's just this transactional experience in our bed. And all I can think about, you know, because we've got we've got teenagers and, you know, the reality is, is that sex ed and health classes are a very real thing in our world. And, you know, I joke all the time, but it's not really a joke that Your marriage bed is the best place for sex ed. Figure out how to touch each other. And if it's the word that bothers you, I'm going to challenge you to get over that, to figure out why that word bothers you. Is it the teaching that you received around that word? Is it all of the, are there negative associations with that word? Is it the idea of touching your spouse that bothers you? And if so, where's that coming from? Because your spouse is literally a gift from God. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you've ever watched like a two-year-old or a three-year-old open a present, but when they do, it is like a full body experience, right? I mean, they're like ripping wrapping paper and they're, you know, especially like little boys with their trucks. I still remember this when our son mm-hmm. was younger, but they want to know how it works. It comes out of the package and they're like flipping it upside down and they're moving the dump truck and they're honking the horn and they're rolling the wheel, like as much knowledge as they can get about this gift. Why are we not doing that as husbands and wives when it comes to touching our spouses? Can I, can I say one thing here? What we got to get in the moment. We have to, that there's so much chatter in your mind. There's so much chatter going on, taking you out of something that's just absolutely beautiful. Even with just this word, masturbation, mutual masturbation, that the chatter is happening and we've been there. The chatter is there and it takes you out. We've been there in, and I will say for Elisa and I, I think one of the biggest things that we've been able to do over the years is to really understand what's happening, to, to talk to emotionally connect and to even be able to say to one another, Hey, I need you to get in the moment. I need you to stop the chatter. Yes. I'm touching you. You're touching yourself. I'm touching myself. We're, we're, we're exploring in this moment together. And yet I need you to be here with me. Mm -hmm. I need you to be here with me because in that moment, in this moment, we're going to experience something that we truly both desire and enjoy. And I get it for some of you, for some of you, this topic is really hard because it's actually become a barrier between you and your spouse. It's been an individual thing. Correct. And and if that's the case, then, then I would say your marriage, like y'all need help breaking free of this, breaking free of it being an individual activity and, and exploring what it might look like for it to be a couple activity in your marriage. And we want to We want to talk about what that can look like for the two of you. But before we do that, we want to thank this week's sponsor. And I mentioned them at the top of the show. It's Open Fit. And summer's here and there's still time. There is still time to get yourself beach ready by letting the workouts come to you. Getting fit and staying healthy has never been easier than with Open Fit. You can sculpt your body in the convenience of your own home with no eyes on you. You know, the weird like mirrors and all that kind of stuff at the gym. You do it at your own home. You don't have to worry about the pressure from other people's eyes or keeping up with your peers at the gym. And Open Fit is great for all fitness lover, fitness levels and fitness lovers. With Tough Mudder and 600 Seconds, these are like our two favorite workouts that yes. we do. We have a big bathroom. We actually do it in the privacy of our own bathroom. So we don't even get the, the commentary from the teenagers. Like, what are you, what are y'all doing? But it's really taken our energy levels and our health into new levels. And it's just an opportunity for us to talk about it and connect on, on what we're doing. 
open fit has changed the way we work out and you can text the code one to 30, 30, 30, and you can join us on a fitness journey. That's personalized just for you right now during the open fit 30 day challenge. Our listeners get a special extended 30 day free trial membership to open fit. When you text one to 30, 30, 30, you're going to get full access to open fit, all the workouts and nutrition information totally free. Again, just text one to 30, 30, 30 standard message and data rates may apply. Now, the truth of the matter is, is that for some of you, the last 20 minutes or so of the show, you've probably heard the word masturbation more than you can ever remember hearing. And it's caused something inside of you to just be like, ugh, right? Because maybe it's the first time you've ever even heard a couple discuss this. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's something that you've thought about and you're like, how on earth do I bring this up to my spouse? And I want you to just like, let's not get hung up on a word. Right. Again, I'm, I'm, we mentioned it earlier in the show. Don't give a word so much power that it can't become part of your conversation. It, it, we, we've got to, we've got to take back our marriages and take back the emotional intimacy in our marriages and not let society or words that society talks about or shames us about or says are bad to prevent us from actually having a conversation with our spouse. Let's, let's take this word and say, okay, if the word masturbation, if we can, if we can move into this place where the definition is stimulating each other's genitals, also known as touching one another, like, let's just, let's just give ourselves a definition that maybe feels a little easier, feels a little more comfortable. Then what does it look like to explore what mutual touch looks like in your sexual intimacy? Do you know do you know how to stimulate your spouse? Do you know what works? And that's a big one. And that's a huge one. I think that each of us has to discover and has to ask one another, mm -hmm. do you know, do you know? Because if you don't, it can get frustrating and it could lead to your spouse wanting to individually masturbate because it's easier. Wow. It's faster. And so are we willing here in the one family are we willing to take a step and ask the tough questions so that we way we can enjoy the pleasure mm -hmm. and even look at ourselves? Believe me, I, I there were times when it, it was difficult for even Elise and I to bring this sort of stuff up to one another. This isn't something that can happen overnight. It's little by little. Mm -hmm. You have the conversation. You discuss something with one another. You learn. L give yourselves an opportunity to not have sex with the lights out, the covers on you, and a quickie. Give yourselves an opportunity to explore. And maybe it doesn't go exactly like you want on that one time. It's okay. It's okay. Because we're learning. Maybe you don't have an orgasm. Maybe you're unable to ejaculate with her touching you. It's okay. And that and I just want you guys to know that every time Elise and I have had sex, it has not been the perfect time always. This isn't the movies. This is real life. And there were times when we had to just go, okay, we've done enough exploring. We've done enough touching. We've done enough trial. We're going to just get into the position that we know is going to work. Mm -hmm. And we're going to just finish off because we've spent time together. And we've had to do that time and time and time again. The thing is, we don't ever stop. We, let me back up. We shouldn't ever stop learning what works for our spouse because they're growing and changing. The man that I married almost 23 years ago is not the same man that I am with today in terms of what works, right? I'm not the same woman. I've birthed two children. My body has changed. There are just, age has happened. Realistically, I am 23 older, 23 years older now than the day I got married. Things are just different. Mm -hmm. And so the touches that worked back then aren't necessarily going to be the touches now. It is okay for a couple to touch each other, to mutually masturbate during their sexual intimacy. You are bring, bringing pleasure to one another and you were designed, you were designed within the marriage bed to bring pleasure to one another. 
Don't yeah. shy away. From, you, you have the gifts, right? You have a body that you can use to touch their body. Use it. It's okay. I, I want to say, here, here's, here's, here's what I want to say here. That many of us, the reason we're, we're standoffish of going down this road is because we don't know when sex is going to happen. We don't know when we're going to get some, so we, we don't want to take the time that it may take to learn one another. And Elisa and I started the intimacy lifestyle coming up on 11 years now. And the intimacy lifestyle is a way for us to schedule sex. So for us, we, we've had sex pretty much continuously two times a week for the last 11 years. I will tell you, that has changed. That has been the game changer for us to be able to explore such as mutual masturbation because we know that we are going to constantly be having sex twice a week in a way that we are learning, learning one another. If I knew I was only going to have sex once a month, that's a different story. It's tougher. And so we want you guys to learn more about the intimacy lifestyle. We want you to start doing your own intimacy lifestyle. So go to episode 422 and you can go to one extraordinary marriage.com slash 422 and you can learn what the intimacy lifestyle is. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, this is going to be a conversation between the two of you. It's going to be a conversation where you may stumble over this word. It's going to be a conversation where you're going to share your thoughts around this word. And it's not a one-time conversation. Like virtually everything we talk about here at one, there's no one and done conversations. This is going to be something that's going to evolve over time, but take that step, take that step to saying, what does this look like in our marriage? How do we want to explore this together as a team? Yeah. Big topic. It's something that we truly believe in, in the sense of, we want you guys to talk about areas of your marriage that maybe you haven't thought about before, or you've given a word such as masturbation too much power, and it's taking you out of being sexually intimate, emotionally intimate with your spouse. So have the conversation, play this together, listen to it together, have a conversation around it together. Don't shy away from the tough questions. Don't shy away from, well, I don't know what works. I don't know isn't an answer. Learn together, have fun together experience one another. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's one of those areas that you, you will find so much depth to one another that you are going to be bonded so well that you grow and you're, you're going to just shine. you both are going to shine because you guys are doing something that, sh that you guys know pleases one another. We love you guys. We're excited to learn more and hear from you as you Go on your journey on mutual masturbation. Love you guys. Have a fantastic week, and we'll catch you next week. Love you guys. 